Thank you, Trevor. Good morning and welcome everyone. It's wonderful to see you this morning. Um, I'd like to just start this morning with a, a little pause as we remember the victims of the Quebec City mosque killings. And I'd also like us to, to pray for peace in our capital region as we see the protests continuing for a second day. So if you'll just join me for just a moment of silence as we remember and we pray for peace and uh, an end to divisive and damaging rhetoric. Our service this morning is a fifth Sunday service of the word and hymn sing. So all the hymns will be selected by you. And uh, I know that Danny has a list. So I'm going to give Danny the, the gathering song since he's already, he's prepared. He, he's got the mart. So Danny, give us, give us the, uh, our gathering song this morning while we keep Trevor on his toes. Hymn number 767, Lord, take my hand and lead me. 767. And it's three verses. Let's do all three. So remember to stay muted. I better do that myself.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and love, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Time for another hymn. Anyone have a suggestion ready to call out? Carol's got her hand up. Okay. You have to unmute. Oh, there we go. There we um, go. Hymn number 793, Be Seven. Thou My Be Thou My Vision. 793. And let's do all four verses. to invite Carol to read our first reading and then we'll select another hymn. The first reading is taken from Jeremiah 1 verses 4 to 10. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Oh, Lord, truly, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Word of God, word of life. 
thanks be to God. Do we have a hymn suggestion? Britt's got her hand up. What would you like, Britt? Oh, you're, you're still muted, Britt. Myself. Okay, I got it. Uh, 613. Number 613. Thy holy wings. Is thy holy wings. And shall we do all three? So yeah, okay. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Number 613, Thy Holy Wings, all three verses. Our psalm today is Psalm 71, which we can re read responsibly as it is found in your hymnal. Psalm 71, verses 1 to 6. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Never let, let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb, you have been my strength. My praise shall always be of you. Here ends the song. Time for another hymn. We've had a request from Trevor. He would like 634, all hail the power of Jesus' name. So everybody else think of some other ones for the next time I call it out. 634. And Trevor, there's six verses, so we don't want to do six. How about... One, three, and six. Okay. One, three, and six it is.
I'm going to switch things up a little bit, Carol. And if it's okay with you, I'll read the second lesson since I'm preaching on Corinthians. And I'll have you do the gospel. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these, is love. Word of God, word of life. Trevor, will you play our gospel acclamation for us? Thank you. gospel reading today is from Luke 4, verses 21 to 30. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus began to say to all in the synagogue in Nazareth, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, truly, I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there are many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a se severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them, except to a widow at Zarephath 
in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elijah, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you, Carol. Our second reading today came from Corinthians, and it's very familiar. It's Paul's Ode to Love. It's a continuation. The reading we heard today is a continuation of Paul's letter to the Corinthians. And we've heard over the past few weeks that there was trouble in Corinth. There was disunity and disagreement, and the community was fractured over the issue of spiritual gifts. And Paul was not going to let this happen to the community. The conflict in Corinth was real. Paul is telling them that what love is, they are not. And what they are not is love. I can imagine that they were not pleased to hear this rebuke. Paul was calling them to account for their behavior. I chose to preach on this reading this morning because it continues the theme from the 16th of January concerning spiritual gifts. Paul wrote that all gifts are good, all gifts are equal, all gifts come from God, and all gifts are to be used for the common good. Paul's emphasis on unity builds to this section. The passage we read this morning may be one of the most familiar in the New Testament, whether you go to church or you don't. It's a favorite weddings, all sorts of weddings. Paul might be shocked at that. In fact, Paul would probably be very shocked that his ode to love has come to be interpreted and used for romantic love. Paul was not talking about love between a couple. Paul was talking about a love that is referred to as agape. This type of love is for the whole community. It is the type of love that puts the needs of others before oneself. Paul is reminding the people of Corinth that although there are many good gifts that come through the Holy Spirit, Behind each gift is love. Paul says, I am nothing if I do not have love. Paul proclaims that it is through self-sacrifice that the word of God is revealed. We cannot separate out this passage and have it stand alone. To do so means that we miss out on a deeper meaning. It means that we miss a chance to think about love in a deeper way. Because the context was conflict. Paul was dealing with a pastoral crisis. The Corinthian Christians were abusing their freedom, refusing to share, scorning their neighbor's spiritual gifts, boasting in their own gifts, seeking recognition for themselves, and jockeying for position in the church. Paul writes this section of his letter to show the people of Corinth what the nature and practice of Christian love should be, can be, must be. Paul gives them a clear message, practice love. Love is not another of the spiritual gifts, it's the way God intends us to practice all our gifts, the love we call agape. It's not a feeling, it's an action. Paul is not describing something sentimental, it's active, tough, resilient, and long-suffering. It's not an easy love. It takes work and it takes practice. Paul spends some time in this section talking about the endurance of love. He reminds us that what we create will not last, that our spiritual gifts will end and at some point we will die. What will last is love. The one thing in our lives that will last is what we give away, love. The standard of love that Paul talks about is high. It has to be. It's Paul's ode to God's love in Christ. It's a standard set by God. We all have room to grow in this type of love. 
That is why Paul is urging the people of Corinth to practice love. We're challenged to try to practice this type of love. Are we doing things in love? How can we do things with more love? What do we do well as a congregation? And how can we enhance these things with more love? How do we make love the guiding force in our lives? The faithful life is one that shows in what we say and what we do, the primacy of love, the character of love, and the endurance of love. Amen. And love as suggestion for a hymn of the day, if anyone has something come to mind quickly. Mona has her hand up. To unmute and, and give us the number, Mona. Hi, everybody. Um, I know this is an Easter song, but if we only sing the first four verses, it doesn't mention Easter. It's 862. 862. Well, it's it's hymn sing Sunday, so we, we can do from any any part of the book. We're not limited by season on days like this. 862, praise, praise, you are my rock. Okay, and we'll, as Mona has suggested, we'll do the first four verses. I invite you to join with me as we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I'll invite Carol to lead us in prayer. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made, responding with, hear our prayer. Guide your church in the ways of faith, hope, and love. Cultivate ministries and communities of compassion that bear witness to your enduring presence among us. God of grace, 
hear our prayer. Teach us to live in humility on the earth. Curb arrogance that leads to destruction of natural resources and disregard for future generations. Inspire the work of scientists who urge us to live in harmony with your creation. God of grace, hear our prayer. You are the refuge of all who seek hope and freedom. Accompany immigrants, refugees, and asylum seekers who cross borders to find safety and opportunity. Embolden leaders to draft compassionate policies on behalf of migrants and those who assist them. God of grace, hear our prayer. Love bears, believes, hopes, and endures all things. Comfort with your love all who are lonely, fearful, or brokenhearted. Sustain the hope of all those who suffer in body or spirit, especially those we name aloud or in the quiet of our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your grace falls upon young and old alike. In our Advent family, we pray for, we pray for Mark, Mala, Anthony, Ramona, Stacy, Kathy, Victor, Nalini, Rhonda, and Doris. Bless the gifts of children in this congregation and in this community. Give us humble hearts to follow their leadership. Inspire us with their laughter, their insight, and their curiosity. God of grace, hear our prayer. We praise you for those who have gone before us and now see you face to face. Abide with us in this mortal life until we rest in the arms of your never-ending love. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I'll invite you to unmute for a second while we share the peace. The peace of Christ be always, always with, with you. you. And also, also with, with you. you. Peace to everybody. Peace. <laughs> peace to everyone. Peace. 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 So I have another hymn selection. <laughs> okay well if, if nobody if nobody else has i've got a list <laughs> you've already one given minute. one carol let's see if there's anybody else in the class that would like to put it hurry up cynthia <laughs> has one okay uh, can we do 856? 856. 856. Uh, how great thou art. Certainly we can. Do you want all four verses, Cynthia? Sure. Okay. That's a nice one. How great thou art, 856. All four verses. Where is Cynthia? Mm, yeah. Since you, I can see. <laughs>
let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory forever. Amen. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Looking for him, su suggestion. Gabby? You? Um, him 414, 414. Holy God, we praise your name. And would you like to do all four verses? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 414, all four verses, all four verses. Holy God, we praise your name. announcements this morning. I just have two. Our discussion group will meet this afternoon at 3 p.m. and our topic is dismantling racism. I've resent out the podcast link because some of us were having some problems this week um, accessing the podcast. So hopefully the link will work today and you'll be able to have a look at the podcasts for today. 
And I just wanted to remind you that our Congregational Council will meet Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. to discuss resumption of in-person worship. And uh, after our discussion, I'll send out an email letting you know um, what, what took place at, uh, at our meeting. I invite you to receive the blessing. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grants you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. And I'm looking for a sending song. If someone's got a, a favorite, a toe tapping, something to send us out into the world once more. Oh, sorry, Britt's got her hand up. I didn't see that. Yeah, well, if, if nobody else has one, I mean, I don't know how toe tapping this is, but if <laughs> this is real. <laughs> This is Sibelius' song, uh, national song it's called, but this is my song. And I thought this fits singing to Canada today too. It's, where, it's number 887. 887. Well, and if, and if there's another burning one, I, we might be able to have another, <laughs> we might have room for another one. 887, this is my song. And I think we should do all three verses. Yeah. It, it speaks to Canada today with all the unrest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Brett.
just before our dismissal, I wanted to remind you that we now can have an opportunity to unmute and have a little bit of social time and, and just uh, chat and I'll have the dismissal and then I'll invite you to unmute. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.